a lot of you will be quite surprised at this video of why I'm basically mourning the passing of Derek Okora, the TV medium uh, from Most Haunted. I thought he was wonderful. I, I've never met him, but I, I absolutely loved Most Haunted when he was on it. Uh, especially the Halloween specials, they were fantastic viewing. Were these people meeting ghosts in many cases? Probably not. Demons, yeah, definitely in some. A lot of time it was just pure entertainment. But at the same time too, it's very easy to knock that stuff. But he always, to me, came across as very sincere and very likeable. And I've never met him, but I know people that met him and said he was a lovely man. And again, he was a regular down-to-earth scouser. And that was what always made him so appealing to me anyway. I can remember a few years back, a good few years back, crawling into a cave or a, a megalith somewhere and the person on the other end asking me, was I okay or what did I see? And I shouted out, Mary loves dick! Mary loves dick! You know, that famous, especially that one, Mary Loves Dick, that famous <laughs> Most Haunted one, where he went into a trance and said, Mary Loves Dick, and uh, it became a, a skit. But it was, you know, and I, was, I remember I was in, uh, I was taken to see it when I was researching Valpurgis Night. I was taken to see an SS bunker. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still from that laugh in another video. An SS bunker in the side of a mountain, and it was completely pitch black. There was no lights inside. You just had to kind of feel, find your way around and use the light from your your flashlight from your phone to get around. And I was <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I started going, "All right, so Adolf, you know, calm down, our kid." And uh, my host, my Norwegian host, didn't get it. But I've always, every time I went into a spooky location, I've always put on Derek Akora's uh, Scouse accent, and uh, and that shows he came. He was an entertainer. He came from a time where you had to be an entertainer to get on TV rather than a presenter, you know. And he was like a throwback to the to TV presenters of the olden days. And uh, he did tours where he would talk to people in the audience and it was probably all cold reading. But I'm going to say something that's going to really interest you and probably annoy some of you. Cold reading, if it's done properly, is a fantastic and a very powerful form of magic. You can okay, you walk into a room full of like Irish people and you go, is there, is there a Sinead here? Is there a Patrick here? You know, this kind of thing. I'm seeing in my mind a rosary bead, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, and the way you, people say, okay, that's fraudulent. You're picking on people's grieving. I know countless numbers of people who went to cold readings and came away healed they felt better and also i've heard stories of ricky of uh, derek okora doing co readings with people that were not cold readings and extracted remarkable in in information you could have possibly never known so it's almost like when you have a personal one-on-one -on -one reading it's real when you have a uh, a group reading, it's a cold reading. Now, the cold reading, as I said, is a form of sorcery and magic, and it's a very clever form. Just think about it. If you and standing in front, an audience in front of a hundred people, and you say, you know, you, you come out, and especially he's him being so likable, and you say, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting a Brian. Is there a Brian? A Brian? Someone, someone, someone called Brian, and someone stands up and says, Yeah, yeah, my granddad is called Brian, and he died, and he. It doesn't matter. Automatically, you've captivated the audience. It's a form of, of charm. You've automatically spelled down the audience. And you've trusted them. That takes tremendous power to do that. You have to be very good. Not a, you know, people think a cold reading is bullshit. Okay, it may be from in terms of connecting dead uncles and aunts. But I think it's actually when it actually gets to that stage, you have to have a certain amount of psychic and magical power to get the audience on your side. Now, when you have them on your side, then things will happen. You'll have a break. You'll have a shift in consciousness within the audience that will have things happen. That suddenly an event could have started off as a cold reading. It's like that thing I've always said. The biggest secret in stage magic is the guys at the very top, like Dynamo and loads of others, 
and you know David Copperfield that the big secret of stage magic is some of them in some tricks are using the real thing well it's the same thing with the cold reading eventually a sense of psychic intensity like a storm builds up in the room and you do have the shift in consciousness and then the real stuff comes through now is it the medium um picking up on dead relatives i don't think so because all the evidence suggests that when you die you're only around a short while and then you you reincarnate or if you don't want to reincarnate or you can go and become like one with the universe this seems to be a common maxim everywhere so it's very unlikely in most cases they would have been but uh, with the projection of the name <coughs> of a of a dead relative would be sent out and picked up by the medium's mind so you know it's what starts out as maybe a ruse ends up as a real phenomena and therefore that proves that cold readings are a form of real magical power in themselves and he was very very good at this because he was genuine he was genuine he and again even if it's the, the part of the show where the cold reading is given if that gives hope to someone that their son that, that was killed in a, in, a, in a mortar is at peace, what is wrong with that? How is that horrible, exploiting people? I'll tell you what exploiting people is. Climate change scientists terrifying children that they're going to die in order to get their grant money. That's, that's ex exploitation at a much worse level because they don't actually deliver anything other than fear and pay and money for themselves whereas someone like Derek Okora on that stage would deliver genuine healing to people and that's why when he passed on I was very sad because I think every generation has a kind of a supernatural you know gateway drug deliverer you had back in the when i was a little kid i was too young right before i was that guy kreskin but i've seen enough of his videos online that he got lots of people interested in the paranormal then you had uh, the israeli guy yuri geller and he you know again i was a little bit before my time and there really wasn't anybody doing supernatural door opening other than probably arthur c clark with his fantastic mysterious worlds tv show and then, then comes along someone like later on comes along in the in the you know the nineties and the two thousands you get you get Derek Okora, who who presents things in such a way that it 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 charges the nervous system. It does you know he does he did come across very well in TV interviews, and also he must be con uh, he must be given due respect. Because he was the one that said Maddie McCann was dead and pissed off the whole McCann industry, uh, the whole McCann abduction industry. And uh, he deserves a lot of credit for that. So, Derek Okora, travel well. You did good work on this planet. And I, for one, am not listening to the people who said you exploited others or anything like that. And there's loads of jokes being made about your passing. I even made one that it was probably the most extreme career uh, <laughs> revival. But it does. I know he'd be the type to laugh at that because he was a, a regular down to air ordinary scouser. And they're a lot like dubs. And uh, uh, we're good at laughing at ourselves. And we're good at, you know, the whole Liverpool's, as I said, as you see my video on Room 313, it's a, it's a place that produces kind of like you know, paranormal things. It's a whole shiver pool thing. And he was part of that. And he deserves his due respect. And uh, so, you know, there you go, Cora. I salute you, sir.